Welcome, everybody. This is the Casino Skunk <laughs> Secret Society. Um, this is going to be a little bit of a different episode. This is an episode that I think it's kind of been a long time coming. As you can see, I'm joined here by Ken Pellman. Ken and I worked in Disneyland Custodial together for many years. What, what, what years were you active in Custodial? I was there from June 1990 to June 2005. So I was there for 15 years and two days. Whoa. Okay. So yeah. I hired in, in 96 and left in 2006. It's technically 2005. It's just easier to say 2006. I was there for 10 years. So we worked. Yeah. You were there like my entire run. Originally. Yeah. I, I, uh, <laughs> the last five years I was there, I was back to being there just weekends. Well, by weekends, I mean Fridays, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, uh, and any Monday holidays. Um, and because I had another job and a full time job, and it was a four day schedule for that other job. So, so when I switched to another job, you started calling me two weeks. You would, you would, you would see me you go, Hey, oh, yeah. two, weeks, two weeks, two weeks, which meant, you know, two weeks to quit. Uh, I, I hadn't put in my two week notice though for, it took me five years to do that. You know, I forgot about that. That was a, a reference to the money pit B was more <laughs> of a, um, it was more of a, like a phrase of endearment because people would always yeah. talk about being able to move on and get away from custodial and, and, and yeah. go on to bigger and better things. So I was very excited for you. Um, but I, I would see you very rarely because I think by that time I was, um, I was a DCA and, and what, 2001. Yeah. DCA opened early yeah. 2001. So yeah, if you were, you switched yeah. over to there. Yeah. That puts yeah, that was you, great uh, too. Great that leap in seniority a, for you. I went from like 111 in seniority on Disney line side, which is pretty good to um number 16 <laughs> number 16 and the reason why i left because i i had found out that all of the all of the lead shifts were pretty much taking in the daytime and <clears> people <throat> taking swing shifts but nobody wanted to touch downtown disney for some reason and they said well this is will be your hours if you want this line and it was like seven to three thirty or seven to 5 30 it was a 10 i was a four hour yeah. four hour line and uh what's funny is as soon as the dca hours got slashed mm. they still needed a 10 hour line in downtown disney because it was still running till late at night and they didn't want a mid lead so it was me yeah. and greg Cobbsiff and and matt harden but um yeah that was great because all of a sudden everybody wanted my shift <laughs> <laughs> so because they all got bumped down to five eights and, oh boy uh, and i still got the and it was half restroom rate as well because mm. there she were the, the restroom yeah restrooms out there yeah it's every little bit game. helps everybody yeah, the, the 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 highest paid day day custodial shifts used to be restroom foreman restroom lead yeah now they've they've gotten rid of those apparently. <laughs> so dude, it's nuts. It's nuts. I I you know, I listened to your show The Sweep Spot with you and Lynn. Thank you Lynn, very much. Also, also a good friend um and coworker. Mm -hmm. Um and I after I had left, I had approached Lynn. I was like, if you want me to talk about what's going on now, um I would love to do that. But I don't feel like the subject matter is good for your show. Yeah. The show is, it has a, definitely is a, a celebration of custodial. It, it's, it's an upbeat celebration of yeah custodial and the history of Disneyland and, and just kind of updating on what's happening now. Yeah. Yeah. And so, so like my slant was um, coming at it a little more negatively, <laughs> especially at the headspace where I was, um, at the time, um, just after just leaving, um, cause I had gone back to Disneyland to work third shift custodial. I did that for five years. Um, mm -hmm. and when I returned, things were not great. I mean, when we left, things weren't great, but yes. when I returned, I could tell things weren't great. And because I was so vocal about it, 
I get a lot of text messages and direct messages from cast members who are still in the park and yes. they need someone to vent to someone to listen to. And um, obviously management is going to do that. And so <laughs> even though I'm away from the park, I, I kind of get these sort of um, messages coming in. Uh, I visited the park a few months ago. And I ran into a mutual friend of ours. I'm not going to say who it was. Um, right. but he, I, I, I saw him and I mean, I hadn't even set foot onto a. Well, there's no trams. I haven't set foot onto the tramway yet. And I got, you know, had a 20 minute conversation about the state of the park. And it's like, it's so bad that this cast member now works in the parking structure. <laughs> this is like, um, uh, someone who takes great pride in custodial and if and if if they're coming out to work in the parking structure to get away from right whatever it's the most it's the, the most park. remote place that you can work in custodial to kind of get away from and and, and because the supervisors are not we, we we used to call them supervisors i guess they're managers but they're not gonna uh make the effort to come out there <laughs> so it's uh Especially now with <laughs> that's, those trams. That's where you want to go if you want to avoid the. Uh, you know, it's kind of like my my wife worked as a, a registered nurse for uh, for years, and she preferred the overnight shift. Uh, mm-hmm. And it was, she works in a hospital. She said it's fewer fewer administrators to deal with. <laughs> <laughs> right, and you work the overnight shift. Right. You know, uh, most most of, you know most of her patients were sleeping. <laughs> you know? yeah. But but yeah, so working out there. I mean, you can't. It's good to focus, you know, we have our podcast focuses on kind of what people do. We do, we do have a few criticisms that we put in there, but you can't deny reality. And the reality is that you have a situation. I mean, you have to go historically back, really. Um, the whole park from the beginning was run by these people who'd been put in place by Walt Disney. And it, the, the same people stayed there, not counting CV wood. If people want to Google that guy, uh, Disney's kind of written them out of their history, but uh, you know, people like Jack Lindquist, Dick Nunes. Um, these were people who worked with Walt Disney and they stayed there and they stayed in charge of the park. And Ron Dominguez, who actually grew up on the property uh, before it was Disneyland. And they all retired, um, you know, early to mid nineties. Right. Mm-hmm. And then, yeah. What what began after that was a uh, revolving door of corporate management. You had these people, who, you know, their goal was to rise up in the in the corporation or jump to another corporation. Their goal wasn't, mm-hmm. hey, I want to be Disneyland president. I mean, what a cool job, Disneyland president. You know, that's a cool that's a cool job to have. Well, no, they wanted to impress, you know, upper management of the corporation and either get promoted or move on to another corporation. And it was a revolving door, you know. Uh, So you didn't have these people who were there from the beginning who thought, well, this is, you know, this is we've done things one way. This is the way it works. Uh, We can change with the times, but we're not going to give up on the values, the traditions, you know, the 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 principles that kept things a certain way. Well, the microcosm of that is custodial. Mm-hmm. Uh, Chuck Boyajian. Yeah. Uh, he would, you know, when Disneyland first opened, a lot of the staffing was from other companies. Mm-hmm. Uh, Walt Disney hired an outside company to do security, an outside company to do custodial. But then he wasn't happy with the job the outside company was doing with custodial. So he said, we're going to start an internal one. And as soon as Chuck Boyajian heard that, and he was working for the, the contractor, he jumped over and hired to, he was the first employee of Disneyland Custodial. At the time, it was called Janitorial. Um, mm-hmm. Tom Ropa was another guy from that company, and he just, you know, he was like second person over there. And the way, you know, old timers tell it, it was kind of a toss up as to who was going to get it, but, but Chuck was the first. So Chuck ended up becoming the top guy in custodial he has a window on main street actually um and he's a disney legend but tom ropa was right there with him the whole way uh and tom ended up handling most of the overnight stuff usually because it's 24 op- 24 7 operation is what it is uh so but you had these guys they had they had direction straight from walt they would meet with walt disney they'd walk the park with walt disney then of course you get into the early 80s uh they retire but 
Chuck's handpicked successor. In fact, we write about this in our second book. Um, our cleaning, we, we wrote two books. Cleaning the Kingdom is the main title of each book. But um, uh, Chuck said, I'm not going to retire unless Ray Sedejas is my successor. <laughs> and yes. and he, he stuck with that. And then so Ray ended up becoming... The, the next guy. And, and then when Ray retired, you still had Mike Sweeney who w- goes all the way back to Chuck and Tom and those guys, you know, fought to keep custodial up to a certain level. It takes a lot of work to hire and train mm-hmm. and instill in people. It, t- it was decades, decades of work. And then the management team was mostly people who came up from the ranks, people right. who had been sweepers, people who had been bussers, people who had worked overnights and the night, you know, graveyard shift. And you, yes, you had some managers that were from other departments. That's fine. But the most, most of it was people who understood custodial and knew right. exactly how everything worked and why we did things the way we were. <laughs> Mike Sweeney's gone, uh, you know, Ray, Ray, Ray retired, Mike Sweeney's gone. And it start like, just like with the, the head of Disneyland itself, you start having all these people come in from other departments switch in switch back out they don't understand people coming from florida people coming from walt disney world where things are different and start changing things and it's like if it's something's not broken why are you trying to fix it (laughs) right i feel like they come here well i feel like they come from a place where you have to make an impact in order to keep your job in order to keep notice you have to make a change yes and I feel like that's the case. And when you have people coming in from other departments, um, the whole purpose of custodial is making it look good. Even before, even before Chuck, even before mm-hmm. Disneyland, um, uh, Walt's wife asked Walt, why would you want to make a theme park? They're disgusting and dirty. Mm-hmm. Like, so Walt says, well, mine won't be. Like that's the foundation of yeah. the park. That's the whole thing is it won't be. <laughs> that's Even before he knew specifically, I mean, he, he knew he was going to have a train there, but there, you know, there's a lot of things he didn't know he was going to have there, but he knew he wanted it to be a clean place that, you know, the entire family could come, uh, you know, wasn't going to be some rundown carny atmosphere. You know? Right. Right. And so it's kind of like, uh, a fundamental part of what Disneyland is and its reputation. And now when you have people coming in from other places, they don't know that history. That history no. hasn't been passed down. Um, I never worked with Chuck, but I worked with Ray and I worked with mm-hmm. Mike Sweeney and um, Mike Sweeney went over to DCA. When I went over to DCA, we became close. We worked as a, a small unit um doing the tiger teams mm-hmm. which i found out much later why they were called tar- tiger teams again has to do with past disney history um and then you have people like you know like john martin and stuff um but yeah it's it's when i left in 2005 um it was still mike sweeney i believe mm-hmm. and then soon after that um someone else came in uh, a guy named jim lake and when I came back, things were very much different. Mm. And so I like to put that on Jim. Um, I have I have never worked with Jim before, um, but I have interacted with him once. And that one time did not leave a great impression on me. Oh, boy. <laughs> Listen to this. So this is before DCA opened, right? Mm-hmm. we're we're me and a couple of other cast members are on scissor lifts t- peeling off tape from um like the top of uh soren so painters came in and painted and mm-hmm. there was some tape from the masking tape was left behind we were up there on a lift getting this stuff working as a team this was the most this is the closest i'd ever worked with a supervisor like, because it was a group of, I think, maybe at the most 10 of us and then, like, three managers. So we're getting things done and getting things ready for this new park to be open. And a group 
of people walk by a group of suits, not from our department. And one of them is Jim. They walk by and they take a long look at us and then they keep moving. I get a call on the radio, not five minutes later saying that a manager wanted something cleaned up 10 feet away from where we're standing. (laughs) And instead of telling us right there, they had to go and call management to say something needed to be done. And that is my impression of Jim Lake. (laughs) I, I came back, I came back to changes and the changes were not great because again, um, at this point, uh, the park had been open 59 years <laughs> when I came back. Well, it was 2015. I came back. Okay. So that would have been the 60 year anniversary. So it's weird to see something that worked so well, um, sort of get tossed aside and messed with like, and you would think like, okay, there's always room for improvement, but these aren't improvements. Um, and I've seen it since I've left. Uh, when I came back after, um, after COVID, um, I was only there two weeks. Two weeks. Oh, wow. Two weeks. Um, I, I, I was there. Um, actually I was there a week. Came back. Um, uh, the, I worked a week, had my weekend came back the following week and um, talked to my, the head of the department, the head of third shift, a fellow by the name of Joe. And Joe also um, came from a different department, moved to days. Sorry to bring this up. Nobody liked him on days. We heard that. I don't know if he knows that or not. Nobody liked him on days. I got along with the guy. I liked the guy enough to tell him, Hey, listen, I have a job opportunity. I'm going to be leaving in in two weeks i'm giving you my two weeks notice he's like okay perfect cool done um i'm not really digging the vibe at at work so i end up filling a lot of that two-week gap with call outs i ended up calling out a bunch of times because it was just everything was so just not good come back on my last day of work it has now been two weeks And I go to talk to another manager who I like, a guy named Aaron. And I said, hey, what do I need to do as far as this getting out of here? He's like, what are you talking about? I said, I put in my two weeks ago, like two weeks ago, I put in my two weeks. He's like, I knew nothing about it. Jumps (laughs) on the computer, no emails, nothing. Joe didn't let anybody know. Um, I was just kind of like, well, what do I do? I said, I'm not coming back. Um, and I don't want to get some sort of like violation. Um, you know, if I just like stop coming into work without a two week notice. And so luckily Aaron took care of it and that's fine, but that's how I left the park. My last day was trying to figure out if it was my last year or not. Um, wow. <laughs> I gave all of my costumes were, were in costuming. I had dumped everything except what I had on my body. And I had a change of clothes in my backpack. I was done. Like I, if I wanted to come in the next day, I'd be wearing dirty clothes. Yeah. So I was like ready to go. And just the communication is just garbage. It's just mm-hmm. not good. And it, 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 the thing that the thing that's the worst is when I came back from um, quarantine, there was a group of people like maybe 30 that were trying to get stuff ready for when the park reopen and the problem is that they took the person who's been the cars land lead the area lead for the last however long cars land's been open and they put him in wash down as the wash down lead hmm. with with young and this is a cast member that's been around since 1977 or 76 um so they know their stuff but This isn't the situation coming back from a year where there's no work being done in the park. Like it's in the worst shape it's ever been and putting the wrong people in the wrong spots just because they've been there for, you know, 44 years um, doesn't make a lot of sense. 
And the thing with leads is the leads don't have any rights. They can pull your radio or do whatever they want with you. Right. So why they were catering to this cast member just to give them a spot. Um, they pretty much took out all the areas and like the cars land lead would take care of cars land. That includes um, the uh, restaurants, kitchens, restrooms and attractions. Mm -hmm. So what they ended up doing was getting rid of those leads and making a lead just for attractions, a lead just for restrooms. So there's no, you sort of lose this um, continuity, I guess, as far as areas are concerned, you lose the fact that one person's overseeing this whole land and knows every aspect and could make sure things are set up right. So each land is done. Instead, you have a restroom lead going all over the park and trying to fix everything all over the park, you know, and it spreads out the focus. So like changes like that are really weird. They don't make a lot of sense. Um, hmm. and, and so I just came back and I'm like, I'm like, Hey, you know, um, this is something that can help out. I would talk to a manager. It wouldn't get done. They, it, it almost felt like they were above cast members. Like if, if a cast member questioned something about the way things were being done, that their management was being brought into question, like whatever. Um, so it was, it, it just, everything from the top down just got mucked up. Um, one of the things that I was really hopeful for was that, who was the manager? We had a manager in custodial. I don't remember who it was over on the DCA side. Um, they left because they were taking care of it. It's like the, the race of the Dejas role or the Mike Sweeney role. Um, they were gone. Um, Dave Sakurai, who was the head of Third Shift, was gone. And they brought in Petra, Petra Brown, mm -hmm. which I was thrilled for because when I hired in in 1996, she was my custodial lead. So yes. to have someone from custodial with that in their blood being the head of the department was very, very hopeful. Mm -hmm. And um, I feel like the system, by the time I left, the system was already way too broken mm -hmm. for her to try to, to fix. Um it's that's rough. Yeah, you she can only do so much, you know, given what she's what she's given, and then you know who else she's dealing with in the whole operation. Um, I mean, it takes a lot to to build something up, to instill pride, instill a sense of teamwork, um, and it's very easy to screw that up in just a short amount of time. It's very hard to get it back. I mean, it's. Uh, one of the things that people people look at that that operation and they say, well, you, these jobs are not meant to be careers. Right. Okay, well, I can see what you're you're saying with that, except that any kind of operation like that needs some uh, long timers. Mm -hmm. You need you need some long timers. Otherwise, it's just not going to be a serious, uh, high quality operation. Um, and if you're going to ignore those long timers, if you're going to treat them poorly, if you're just going to just respond to what they say with, well, we're not going back, we're not going back to the past, you know, that is, that's not a way to <laughs> handle things. Those yeah. long timers teach the newer people and instill in them a sense of this is why we do this. This is the pride we have in this. Um, you know, we're, I mean, think about it, it in the big scheme of things, we're talking about a theme park. And, and people say, people say, oh, it, 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 people say, it's just, it's nothing, you know, it's, it's, it's just, it's just a little entertainment venue. Who cares? Except you have millions and millions of people visiting every year from all over the world. And uh, it's been an inspiration to a lot of people. Even mm -hmm. how it was run has inspired so many other companies and operations. Uh, and yeah, it's not essential to your life, but it's a real shame when somebody builds something that is really 
astounding and reputable. And then you, you go in and you screw it up. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> and I know, I know it's just picking up trash, but, and it's not rock and science, but like it does take skill to keep it going and to keep yeah. people motivated. You have to let them know, like it's important. And I feel like with, with management just kind of getting shuffled into custodial, they haven't learned that 60 plus year legacy. They don't fully understand it. Um, the, Disney, <laughs> that's all we hear is Walt's legacy, Walt's legacy. Mm-hmm. But, but I feel like the, the legacy of custodial is, is like completely lost. Um, I never worked with Chuck. But I know a lot about Chuck and it's Mm -hmm. not just through your podcast. It's through by working there, by working with the old timers, working with, um, with Harry, Harry Hamhauser and your Larry Snows, they would talk about him, you know, Mike Um, Larson, you you know, (laughs) yeah, you need those, you need that connective tissue. Um, you gotta understand why you're doing it. It's not, it's, I know it is a job, but it's more satisfying when you, when you understand like what it means to people. Um, it, it's, it's, uh, it, it, the, the thing they're doing now is the way custodial, let's just talk about a day custodial ship for a sweeper. Yes. You would go in, you would get your assignment from your lead. You would get a specific area and you were to maintain that area for your entire shift with the exception of breaks. Mm-hmm. Now, that area was you were expected to complete that area every 15 minutes. Yes. 15 minute rounds, 15 15 minute round. Um, And the areas were kind of set up for in different quadrants based on busy days and slow days, but it was Mm -hmm. always meant to do a complete round within 15 minutes. Um, That way you knew things were looking good. Mm -hmm. You didn't, you didn't want popcorn sitting there for more than 15 minutes. Um, it just, it was a good system. You would also have, if you were assigned trash, you would go and you would dump the trash cans, all the trash cans in that entire area. And um, let's just use uh, Adventureland Frontier as an example. Okay. So you know a thing or two about that. Yeah. So your different areas would be Adventureland, Frontierland. On busier days, you would have um, like a bridge to bridge, which goes from Pirate's Bridge to the bridge uh, on the Big Thunder Ranch. And then yeah. if it was a really busy day, you might have someone on Circle who just went from Frontierland and Adventureland Gate restroom around Golden Horseshoe and do a yeah. there. Yeah. So there, all of these were expected to be done in 15 minutes. Um, you had uh, the trash people would dump all the trash in Adventureland, Frontierland, and the attractions, with the exception of Indy. Indy would have its own crew that took mm-hmm. care of both. So... That's kind of how it's just set up. Now they've changed it. And I've heard about this change. And it has combined sweeping the area and dumping the trash at the same time. Right. I, have a couple of, I have a couple of issues with this. <laughs> First of all, when I opened downtown Disney, uh, there was behind the House of Blues, there was a garbage chute that went down to the... To the um, the area down below where they brought in the trucks, the, uh, the service deck. And I discussed with the managers, how are we going to do this? The, the, the liners, the, the cans inside the cans are too big to be able to get the trash in there cleanly. And so I offered the solution. Why don't we bag all the area cans? We can throw them down the chute done. They agreed to that. They thought it was a good idea. We worked as a team. This hourly lead and the management team came to the conclusion that this was the best. We will go with Ralph's plan. So now in this new format where they're pushing around a cart all day. So now that you have a cart, an ugly cart in the area all day. Ugly it's gray. Not, it's ugly gray. <laughs> you know? It's not yeah. into the area. They yeah. used to, we used to hold, carry the liners in a 
a cart that was themed to the area. So yeah, if someone it, took it, it would hold six, it would hold six or eight liners, and it was themed yeah. to the area to blend in. Yes. Yeah. Um, so now they're using this Rubbermaid off the off the shelf cart, and yes. all the area cans are backed. It's an incredible waste of plastic. Yeah. Yes. And the carts are ugly. And it's up to the cast member to find time to keep what I'm assuming now obsolete 15 minute. Cycle they don't do, they're the not they're, the 15 minute cycle's gone. They ditched it. Yeah. And I can't imagine that this is a more efficient way of doing things. I, I just can't, I can't believe that it is. I it would, we, instead of having a separate trash crew, but um, as far as the 15 minute rounds being gone, I can't tell you, I have personal experience with this. I mm -hmm. testified on Disney's behalf in a lawsuit. I testified in court. Mm -hmm. I can't tell you how many times the fact that we had 15 minute rounds had saved Disney in lawsuits because they were able to bring, usually it'd be Harry Hemhauser because he was the longest tenured day custodial yeah. person at the time. But they would bring Harry or in one case it was me into court and, and explain we have 15 minute rounds we're checking everything in 15 minutes or less throughout the day. So if something's broken, if, you know, if there's a problem with the walkway, if there's some, a slip hazard, we're on it. Uh, we're on it right away. And I can't tell you how much money that has saved Disney. And mm -hmm. now, you know, they better not be using that in court now because it's not, it's not true. <laughs> yeah. It's not part of the I, official way of doing things. There was a night I was out on the hub um, on Main Street. Luckily, I was the lead that night because I had a radio on me. And I was, as I was going around, there was a, a woman sitting on a bench and her husband was laying down, looked like he wasn't doing well. And I asked, like, do you need help? And they had broken English and they're like, um, we're fine. We should be okay. It's just, I don't know. There's just, he's just tired. And I'm like, it doesn't look like he's just tired. And, you know, we're supposed to ask, what, three times? Yeah. And then if they deny you the fourth time, you just leave them be. But I let, before I asked my second time, I said, we have nurses. They're really close. I could get out someone out here within a minute. They'll be out here just to make sure everything's okay. And she's like, oh, yeah, I think we're fine. I'm like, okay. I don't want anything bad to happen while you're having, you know, you're just trying to have a good time. And she said, oh, okay. So I called, <laughs> I called and because we were right across from, um, the first aid, the nurse was out there in a matter of a minute, <laughs> like yeah. however long it takes to get from there to the, to the, uh, um, popcorn cart guy had some sort of heart problem mm. i don't know if it was a heart attack but i found out later when i went into the nurse's office they're like yeah he had we sent him to the hospital because there was some irregularity going on mm. and so if you don't have cast members in in the area you know on that 15 minute cycle you're gonna miss stuff like that yes if you if if you have a person dumping trash instead of paying attention to the area and what's going on there's there's a lot of room for catastrophe we we were the it, uh, to, to borrow that line from uh breakfast club we were the eyes and ears of that institution yeah. and you you would know you would i mean one of my first my first shift in the area was with Vern Hoyland <laughs> and he said you don't have to walk around staring at the ground look ahead if there's something on the ground, if there's something out of place, you'll notice. And he was right. We would we would know instantly if so, if somebody had moved a can, if somebody had moved a bench, if if there was a problem somewhere, uh, if somebody was having trouble, or the you know some odd behavior or whatever, that would stick out like a sore thumb to us because we would be constantly you know every ten or fifteen minutes we'd be doing that area and we knew what was supposed to be where. Um, and you just had to keep an eye on it, you know, talk about an unskilled job, but there was a lot of skills to it, you know? Yeah. It took a lot of, um, sort of, uh, 
street smart, I guess. Yeah. Um, but like speaking of Vern, um, working in the New Orleans area, the there's a lot of trees and the drinking fountains would get clogged regularly. Mm-hmm. And it's something where you can call a plumber, but it might take a while. And if it takes a while, that water spilling into the area could cause a slip hazard, any number of things. So you learn how to unclog them yourself. (laughs) You would go to a, you would go to a, I mean, let's just say you would go to a food location, get a wax cup. Yeah. And use that as a plunger. Those usually work. You can, you can pull the bristle off a a clean broom and use it to (laughs) sort of snake the drain. Yep. Um, but there is ways to prevent things from happening. You start learning these sort of tricks to make sure things were running properly. Um, you would start making relationships with other departments and people so mm. that if something was wrong, you could get it done even quicker. You didn't have to go through like proper channels. You could, you like knew the guy who <laughs> would fix that sort of thing and get it done as soon as possible. Um, now it's, crazy like there was i had an i had a thing that i was dealing with in downtown disney on third shift and i'm like well this needs to be taken care of and so i called the day lead and they're like oh i didn't know this and then i called the manager to come see what i was talking about is horrible behind construction walls still an area open to cast members and wasn't that taken care of for months so so they gave me all kinds of praise for partnering with them and taking care of this thing and letting them know about this thing. I'm like, this is, should be normal. Everyone should be working <laughs> together to take yeah. care of this stuff. And it's, th- there's no, there's no like inner, inner department sort of communications. There's none nice. of that. People there's, there's, I would walk into a restroom at night and they'd have the closed sign on the stall that keeps them from opening and letting people know they can't go in. I'd go in, pop it open. Mm. Of course, you get your broom, you put it over the stall and you unlock it that way. I open it, it was just a it was just a clogged toilet. <laughs> so I cleared the I cleared the clog. Like how long had that been going? How long had that been closed uh. to the guests? Like it just you gotta use some brain power and you need you need leaders in place that will teach you these shorthands, but everyone moves yeah. around so much that nobody has passed along the knowledge. There's no knowledge to pass along. Mm. Um, they don't even do like, they don't even know the custodial whistle anymore, yeah. which is just baffling <laughs> to me. It's just baffling. So the only, the, the, when I go visit the park, if I see an old timer, I'll do the whistle and they'll look confused. They'll like be like, Oh my God, someone's yeah. trying to get hold of me. But um, <laughs> for those of you don't, that don't know, it's very loud at Disneyland. Yes. <laughs> and if you want to get the attention of someone in the next area over and they're kind of far away, there's a specific whistle you would do. And they would hear that one sound when they're trying to drown out the rest of the sounds. Yeah. Then they would look up, you'd go and talk and say what you need or whatever you want to do, or you would hit your pan. Boom, boom, just yeah. twice, boom, boom. And that would get their attention. You would just you would hear <laughs> these things. There was these like uh, Pavlovian responses. Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> the custodial keys, if you didn't have a pan and couldn't whistle and you had keys, there were a very specific tone. The custodial uh, keys. I used to keep those keys in my pocket instead of dangling just so people couldn't hear me coming. <laughs> yeah. 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 It's, it's a very specific. It's such a specific tone. And every once in a while when I'm at the park, I'll hear some keys being jingled. I'm, I'll immediately like perk up and look to see who it is. Oh, yeah. um, very Pavlovian. But stuff like that isn't passed down. And it's like those are things that made the job so much more easy. It was like a shorthand. Mm-hmm. And it was, I don't know why that doesn't get passed down. Is it because the old timers are gone? Is it because no one's sticking around? No one cares? It's very yeah. strange. It's quite mm. different if you think it's just, you know, I'm just here for a, sh- I'm just here until I can move, you know, until I can jump ship, you know, whether to another department or outside of the company entirely. I mean, it's, <laughs> I, all that time I was there, I was hoping to get a job 
uh, I was hoping to work for Imagineering. Right. Even after I got my other job and I was just there for the last five years part time, I was still hoping to work for for Disney mm-hmm. in some capacity in, in in Imagineering or I was applying for positions uh, backstage at Disneyland, you know, like in cast communications and things like that, because that was kind of the experience I was getting at my other job. Uh, and finally, the time came where I had to leave. But, you know, and, and I hadn't gotten another job there. Um but my point is that I wasn't going, you know, <laughs> I'm just here until I can leave, you know, for another, another job. I cared about what I was doing there. <laughs> so, plus I wanted it. I, lo- I enjoyed the place myself and I wanted to make sure that other people had the kind of experience I did. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, that group of leads when I came in were, were huge. You, Petra, Patrick Gogley, Ken Kimberling, Ken Kimberling, who's yeah. now a manager at the DCA side. And um, when I would come in for third shifts, it would be the end of his night. And we'd just talk and we just like, like Ken was one, one of the more rebellion, rebellious custodial cast members. <laughs> yes, he was. <laughs> um, we can, we can talk about that in a second if you want to, <laughs> but, but the fact that he's a manager now, it just shows you that even the most rebellious of cast members are doing it out of um, this sense of um, pride and you know it you know back then it was a thing where you would get mad because things weren't being done right but you could you could make it so your voice was heard yeah and things can get taken care of now no one's listening no one's listening to any cast members well Um, there used to there used to be roll call you know you would have roll you'd have roll call for the foreman uh, of course, anybody working underneath you could come to you and talk with you. Uh, and then they had roll call for the foreman almost every day uh, where you're meeting with management and you're discussing things. Um, and then, of course, you could approach the managers individually as well and just talk with them about stuff. And maybe, uh, you know, maybe the answer they gave you wasn't something you liked, but at least they listened to you and they understood exactly where you were coming from. Because most of them had been in had been in your shoes before. Um, I mean, it's okay to have you know a couple of people from other departments. Uh, that's fine because they get acculturated by the the people who are there, <laughs> and they say, "Well, welcome to custodial. This is how it is here." You know, blah 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 blah, and it gets through, and you know, then they become part of the, the family. And likewise, you know, some of the custodial managers would leave for other departments because that was just part of how things were done. Jeff Sandy was somebody we we've uh, we've talked with, and and he said he said, hey, when I was working, when I went off to work for other departments, I would always tell people there, you ought to get some time working in custodial. <laughs> if you ever get the chance to work in custodial, go work in custodial. It's great experience because most people who've never done it would think, why would I want to be in custodial? Why would I want to pick up trash? Why would I want to clean restrooms? And it's like, you know what? If you experience what? the job, you'll you'll see. You know, it's, why would I want to yeah. sneak into the back of haunted mansion <laughs> after hours and be yeah. be one of pepper one of the peppers ghosts in the attic? Why would I want to, you know, yeah. crawl around in places that no one gets to see? Uh, the thing with custodial is you do have a lot of freedom of movement. You're yeah. confined to an area, but if you sneak into certain places that you probably shouldn't be. You'll always have an excuse if someone catches you. And that is, we heard there was something in here that needed to be picked up. So that kind of gives you the freedom to kind of poke around inside the rocks at the the ranch. <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, yeah. the, I got yesterday I had, I got a Powerade. I don't usually drink Powerade, but I got a blue Powerade. And it immediately, as soon as I drank it, popped into my head. I used to take blue power aids from the hunchback break room <laughs> like, <laughs> like you just find places because they would just bring in cases of blue power aids and just stick them in there oh, and wow. so me and me and uh, uh kelly at the beginning of our shift would go in there put a couple in their fridge and then at the end of the night because they were only running hunchback like a weekend so the Powerade was just sitting there. It needed to get used. It needed to get used. Um, but it's one of those things where with custodial, custodial, you can kind of make your way around the park and get the ins and outs, which ultimately, uh, you know, helps you out because you learn shortcuts. If there's, you know, 
if there's some sort of event or parade and you need to get around something, it's good to know the ins and outs and where you can go and where you can, you know, get around um, the group. Yeah. Um, it, it back then was a fun time. My time at Disneyland, I was there from 95 to 2001. And then I went on to DCA, but mm-hmm. I mean, I learned so much. And when I went over to DCA, I mean, it was up to us, the young leads that decided to, you know, take the opening shifts to sort of pass along and keep that tradition. And it was great because at the time we were working with a clean slate. We had a park that was completely had new paint. Mm -hmm. Every rail was unchipped. Every can (laughs) was pristine. And we're just like, let's keep it like this as long as we can. And now when you go to DCA, it looks kind of run down. Um, it, It, you know, they have they have the day custodial now doing third shift jobs during the day. They're doing yes. restroom restroom cleaning and stuff. They're taking mm-hmm. away hours from um, third shift. Right. Which, third shift move window washers uh, to a four a.m. shift. Mm. So now when you go to Disneyland, uh, you can see the window washers who are s- supposed to be resetting the stage yeah. for the following day. <laughs> the stage isn't finished being resetted and you still have guys out there washing the windows. Uh, it, the window washers don't like those the new hours. No. But who cares? They're not the manager. They're not going to tell the manager. The managers won't listen to them. So just everything is like met with sort of this brick wall of resistance from management. And yeah. the management team that Third Shift has now is not good. Mm. Um uh one one retired during quarantine um one quit during quarantine and one passed away from covid no oh boy good good friend of mine jose knew him since i worked at disneyland in the office way back when uh. so we were left with joe mcgee who was heading the department uh vera campos who came from hotels or something um i'm just gonna flat out say it i don't care She's no good. Uh, oh never seen I, I don't her, know. Never it's your, it's your opinion, not mine. I don't know. <laughs> it's, it's my opinion only. Um, yeah. it, uh, but when you only have two managers, they better be good. And they weren't. Yeah. Um, Joe was the kind of guy who would show up whenever, um, whenever Bob Iger would have some Avengers. He showed up in like a three piece suit at like nine in the morning, like mm-hmm. where were you all night where, while we were making the stage look good for him, but you just want to come in and show off and, and, you know, try to do whatever you're doing instead of taking care of your department. Um, yes. Vera, Vera is a person who, um, this happened a couple times while I was hosing, she would walk right by me, not say good morning, not, nothing like that, nothing, but people who are across the street and aren't doing like don't have their protective closet will run all the way across the way to tell them something we were in a <laughs> we were in the cage uh where we keep the scrubber machines and uh one of the cast members didn't have their vest on because he's it was hot but he knew it'd be colder later so he's taking off his jacket and it, he'd just taken off his jacket and to go put his vest back on she came all the way across from the office and told him to put on his vest um She's never once, never once saw her at a cleanup, never once saw her doing, um, holding a piece of equipment. I don't know what her job knowledge was as far as the custodial department. Um, she, she had picked me to be the Hollywood lead as a fill in and never once got an email about the area, never talked to me about the area. And then all of a sudden, the next thing I know, I wasn't in the area anymore. It was really strange. So it's it's really hard to work with a management team that A, isn't skilled in custodial, but B, isn't willing to work as a team to listen to the hourlies. You have to. If I mean, I get it if you don't want to talk to a regular hourly, but if a lead is coming up to you and saying there's an issue, don't meet them with resistance. Discuss it. Find yes. out what the best solution is and execute the solution. If that solution doesn't work, let's talk about it some more. But it's essentially mm-hmm. like, a, talking to a brick wall and my hope was when petra came back it would be someone who understands what it means to be in custodial and i would have an easy time talking to her but 
I could tell she had too much on her plate. Yeah. And I don't know. She, I don't know. I, I'm saying right now she needs a better team. 100%, at least on the third shift side. Uh, she has Ken Kimberling on the day side. Um, he can only do so much too. But the rest are people from like attractions and attractions. I guarantee you someone from attractions come into custodial who hasn't talked to Jeff Sandy have <laughs> to feel that it's a demotion. Yeah. yeah. When it's the most important what did I, what did I do wrong in, to get stuck here? You know, <laughs> it's the most important job in the park. Custodial you, can't, you can't, you can't run the park without it. I mean, what have we learned yeah. from the last two years is sanitation is extremely important. Yeah. You know, I, I, I it's I don't want to compare custodial to the first responders, but custodial yeah. is the first line between <laughs> guests yeah. and the park. Like we're the ones you see out there. As yeah. soon as you go through before you even get on a tram, there's the cast member dumping the trash. Mm -hmm. If something happens in the structure, the first person you're gonna see is custodial. Yeah. It's the last person you see uh, when you're in the park in the area. The first person you're going to see is probably one of the million vendors, but they can't get up and help you. They have to stay at their cart. Hopefully they'll have a radio, right. but custodian should be there doing a 15 minute cycle, being out in the area and visible, constantly moving in that 15 minute cycle, not stopping to dump trash, but just constantly moving. You're the eyes and ears of that area mm -hmm. it's the most important role in the park it's the first it's, it's, mm, yeah you know you're accessible to the guests um you are keeping your eye out for everything that's going on uh it's it's a very important role it's um and and for, i wanted to mention petra for people who don't know <laughs> she was she was uh there was a time where the Main Street Electrical Parade was leaving Disneyland supposedly forever. Okay. That was my people, first summer. And and people thought it was actually going to go away forever. Okay. Mm -hmm. Turned out turned out not to be true. But that was 1996. And 1996 was such a like difficult year for Disneyland. The attendance level increased significantly. You know, we're talking like uh, maybe 25% jump in an attendance. Uh, and you had two you had two parades during the day. You had the Hunchback show going on. You had, uh, a po I think, the Pocahontas show over at the theater. And then you had Fantasmic. And then you had the two performances of the Electrical Parade every night. Uh, and we had an events crew, and Petra would be one of the, the leads for the events crew. And I was on that crew it, that summer. It was a huge job huge responsibility and i i got i i just got a, a big smile on my face when she was put in charge uh you know all these years later <laughs> having been through the having been in the trenches as she had been you know mm -hmm. um yeah <laughs> i was on i was on our crew i was on yeah. that crew we would i would show up at work do the hercules or lion king I believe it was Lion King back then still. Hercules and okay. I, th I think Hercules was next year. Yeah. I was on that prey crew too. Yeah. The light magic. Um, the uh, But yeah, I would come on and immediately gra grab a, a, a liner and start picking up trash after the, uh, the Lion King. Get up to the parade cage, do a um, Pocahontas cleanup then some of us would go sweep out lines. Some of us would help out for Hunchback. And then it was like an early, early lunch. And then mm -hmm. the rest of the night was Electrical Parade pre-show, Electrical Parade closing, maybe uh, do then uh, fireworks cleanup at Small World Mall or Castle. Um, I always got Small World Mall because Michelle liked me as doing that because I think Michelle was also a, um, doing that as well. Maybe that was the following year, but then you would also then do the, the electrical parade cleanup. And then I would go home because I had an earlier shift and the rest would go do fantastic cleanups. Like it was relentless. It was a relentless yeah. summer. My, it was my first summer there. My line was nine hour shifts 
with the Friday night being, uh, or the Saturday night being back areas with Olga. Loved it. <laughs> um, but it was a great line. I had Sunday, Mondays off my first summer there with overtime guaranteed every week. Yeah. It's four nine hour shifts and then an eight hour shift. So it was 44 hours, 44 hours my first week. And it was non stop. <laughs> yes. And it was, it, it, you know, you have people set in regular roles. You do those summer lines. You have the, the same crew every day. You start functioning like a well-oiled machine. You, yeah. you just went and everybody did their job. They knew what their roles were and you went out and did it. Um, nowadays, I don't even know if leads are in the same areas. I don't know. <laughs> the jobs are different every day. You're just, you're, you're adding on new tasks to people and it just sounds like a complete mess. And when yeah. you look at the park, it doesn't look the same. It just doesn't. And that's a problem. <laughs> and like I said, I hope with someone like Petra there who knows how it should go that she can get it back into shape. But I, I just don't know. It seems like an uphill battle. Yeah. Yeah. Because people, because people, all the old timers are now giving up their radio, their elite status. Because they don't want to deal with it, they're not being heard. Why would you? Why would you? Keep well, when they elim- when they eliminated the daytime, uh, the when they eliminated the restroom foreman uh, for daytime, because what this person would as a foreman uh, for restrooms, what this person would do was set up for the day. If they were opening, they would set up for the day. You know, they've assigned the different people to their restroom splits. Which restrooms are they going to clean? And then this person is going to go around. He's going to answer calls from the office about, you know, any problems that come up. Uh, going to go cover lunches when someone's on their lunch. Uh, might do things, you know, might do some really heavy cleaning. You know, we had a restroom foreman that would, uh, you know, take out a mirror if it had been etched. Yeah. You know, just different things like that. Um, and it's important to have that person now that they, they got rid of those positions. And Mike Larson, I think that was his cue to retire. He had been there. He, he had become the longest, one of the longest uh, cast members at all, but the lo- definitely longest for custodial. And he, uh, he just, you know, they eliminated his position. And instead of taking an area from somebody, he's just like, well, time to retire, you know? Um, yeah. And, but they expect the area people to go in and do that. And it's just not going to get the same attention that it, that it was when you had a dedicated yeah. restroom foreman. Yeah. You know? I would, I, when I was a lead in downtown, I'd be taking down mirrors all the time because they were etched. And um, I knew to do that because of people like Mike. No. You know, they didn't teach me that as a lead. They don't teach you anything as a lead. <laughs> you, when you, when you're a lead, when you become a lead, you bring in all the experience that you've learned over the years and inject that into what you're doing. And there's, there's no leadership now. So people aren't seeing this stuff. So no. who's taking down the mirrors? Are mirrors getting taken down? Are soap, are the soap dispensers getting take down, taken down when they're broken? Who knows? All I see is I'll close this stall and let, someone else figure out how to clog <laughs> unclog it it's it's rough man and um i i, I hope i hope that if things get better i kind of was um i started a twitter account that pointed out all the problems with custodial and trash and stuff and i just deleted it i'm like i i can't i don't work there anymore yes. i like the park i'm proud of the work i did i wish that kind of effort was put in it to today but it's not, and I just need to let it go, <laughs> and 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 just hope hope that the next time I go, which will be in a couple weeks, that things look good. But I it, guarantee it becomes you, it's it's somebody else's problem now. <laughs> yeah. I and, know, and that's the that but that's the mentality of today's custodial. They were doing a thing where they were getting bumped out of areas. They weren't doing the areas the whole day. They were yeah. using the seed the cast deployment system, and you'd be sweeping the hub you know for like five minutes and someone would come up off their break and say i'm on the hub now go to the back area jump on the computer and see where your new assignment is <laughs> meanwhile there's nobody there and so like if my uh, next assignment is if i'm just going to be at town square for five minutes i'm not going to clean this i'm not going to you know take you're not going to care i'll yeah. let the next guy do it so stuff uh, sit there well i think that's um 
I'm glad that that Lynn and I wrote our books when we did. Um, the first one, Cleaning the Kingdom, Inside Tender Tales of Keeping Wall Street Spotless, came out in 2015. And then we did a follow-up called Cleaning the Kingdom, Night, Day, Past, and Present, which uh, a certain somebody here was quoted heavily in. Um, <laughs> which one has the Space Mountain story? Do, do, do either of those have the Space Mountain story? Space Mountain? Which Space Mountain that story? The one where I, I, I where there was like softball size caca in the oh, I don't know, oh, I'm oh, oh oh i believe that i think that's in the the second one that's in clean the kingdom night day past and present i believe yeah. um but yeah the <laughs> <laughs> you were referring to the restroom and not the attraction um, oh yeah yeah, yeah. that's yeah. why i was like space mountain because because we would go in and we would we would actually clean space mountain uh, uh during renovations we'd go in there and and, and dust the place and degrease the track and everything but that was another experience i got to do that was uh, a lot of fun but i'm glad we we did the books when we when we did because they kind of are a time capsule in um how things were done we i mean we the first book has a lot of like just stories of things that happened while we were there and people that we dealt with but it also has very detailed description of how we did what we did you know and it's kind of like a time capsule so yeah. you know hopefully uh some people can use it as a textbook and go back and say hey this is how things used to be and if we can get back to this you know uh it'll be good again <laughs> and uh that yeah, i mean you know we wrote the chapters so that people if, if that's going to be boring to somebody if they don't really want to know how we kept uh you know, Norland Square clean. Well, they can skip that part, and they can get to the parts about all the gross things that we used to clean up. <laughs> so, yeah. you know, that's the way it's written. So, I'm I'm hoping that it's kind of. I mean, I've heard that the book can be seen on some bookshelves backstage in the park, and I'm hoping that it's kind of like a a, a call to uh, to return to what worked from the past while they're going forward. Oh, and- I, would, I wouldn't mind dropping off some to the custodial office, just leaving them on the uh, the desks. <laughs> the, yeah, sabotage. <laughs> okay. Yeah. <laughs> it, 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 something's got to something's got to happen. Um, yeah. Yeah. It's it's definitely, and I know we're just a couple of men bitching about how it used to be. Grumpy but old it, man, I tell you. I'm yeah. 100%. <laughs> I'm 100% on board with evolving and making things better, but these are like big steps back for sure. Yeah. yeah and, you can, and the proof, the proof is in the pudding. It's it, you go look at the park and uh, tell me, tell me it's as clean as you remember. Yeah. And if it is, then I'm happy for you because you got a good experience, but I don't think it is. Um, uh, everyone listening to this and watching this check out also the sweep spot podcast you guys are up to like how many episodes it's we're like 300 and we're, we're going to be recording 322 pretty soon here but wow. yeah so it but just you know all the information is at the sweep you know information yeah, about the books the information book. about the podcast the podcast episodes are free uh we do have a patreon but the but the but the main episodes we do are free um yeah. so check it out Love it. If you want more insight on how the park works, especially in custodial, um, it's, it's a great listen. Um, Ken, thanks yeah. for joining me. Well, thank you so much. Um, and I'm glad to get your feedback on your experiences there because I was very curious as to what you had experienced. Yeah, it was mostly, it was mostly, I know it's going to get worse before it gets better. And I don't want to be here for that. <laughs> Oh boy. <laughs> I don't need to be here for that. And the thing that, the thing that is the mostly irritating for me is um, I did a lot for the department. Um, not only just working the 15 years I worked there, but things like the electrical parade thing that, that summer was nuts. Um, Light magic summer worked that summer on the mm-hmm. play crew. That was nuts. Still waiting for that to return. It's on hiatus, correct? Yeah. It, it went on hiatus. <laughs> <laughs> that was 1997. It went on a hiatus. Yeah. yeah. Um, but <laughs> things like things like I was working in the office on 9/11, and 
called everybody out. Uh, and me and a couple of managers had to call and make sure nobody came in. If they did came in, let them know that they could leave. But I, I had to work that whole day. I worked that whole shift. There was wow. me, another another office cast member, a men and women's restroom lead for either of the parks, just in case they needed yeah. it for some reason. Um, open DCA, open downtown Disney. Um, mm -hmm. When when coronavirus happened uh, and we were on furlough, so we were getting paid even though we weren't working for a month, volunteered my time to go in and hose uh, four weeks. They, they, they had one day a week because they thought the park can open any time if you'd mm -hmm. like to volunteer your time. Did that. Um, never once received a sweeping Mickey pin. Never once. Wow. And that bug, that's what bugs me is you put in the time and you do all this stuff and you just don't feel recognized. And so that's kind of what got motivated me to leave. It's like, why am I putting all this effort into this job that um, no one seems to care about anymore? Um, so that, that's, that's why I left. And during, during quarantine, I was back at the park for more than five years, which means my time from before bridged with my new time. <clears throat> and I'm still hoping, hoping that I get my 15 year pin, my 10 year pin and uh, my, my statue, but I don't know if it's going to happen. Well, I'm after recording one. this, after, after recording this, you probably, you know, there. I mean, I'm, <laughs> old, I'm old one. I definitely owed it. So I'm hoping, uh, but I just want the pins. I have my one year, my five year, I, I need my 10 and 15. I, it's something I feel like if anything, I deserve those. You definitely I put, deserve it, I put those. in the, I put in the time, um, That's right. whether people think it was a good use of my time or if they thought <laughs> I was an okay cast member, but uh, I feel like from the majority of the, of the leads, I feel like I was respected as a hard worker. And then I got along with managers for the most part, but just never felt like, Never felt like I was welcome, you know. Mm. So well, you definitely you definitely paid your dues, and you should be. Yeah, you should get those. You know that would yeah. that would be the right thing to do. So yeah, I, I I figure that this is a good way to sort of put that out there publicly, and um, just let people know if you do end up working at Disneyland and you do get custodial, give it a shot, <laughs> give it <laughs> give it a couple months. I, I think you'll you'll enjoy it as long as you work with the right people. Yeah. So, you're, you're not, you're not stuck in one place at a console. You're not having to tell people, Hey, if you're pregnant, you can't ride this attraction. And they go, I'm not pregnant, you know, and then you're, then you feel like, uh, Oh boy, <laughs> uh, you're not, you're not going to be accused of shortchanging anybody or stealing any money. Um, yeah. <laughs> so yeah. it's a good position to have. <laughs> um, and if there's a, if there's a really big problem, you can walk away from it. Yeah. it's that simple i've seen i've seen a fight and i've been like i want nothing to do with this i'll go find a security guard and just <laughs> distance myself from the situation um so you have a lot of freedom in custodial and um i think it is i mean i've only worked in two departments i worked a year in parking which i enjoyed but i, I say it's the it's the best department i think it's the most important department and i think it's the one it's it's the reason why the park exists because Walt told Lillian, Lily, yeah, um, Lily, yeah, that his wouldn't be dirty. So, thank you for joining me. Um, thank you. If there's anything that comes up, maybe we can chat about it again. Uh, that would, that would chat be again. I would love to come on the sweep spot if, as long as I have something positive to say. <laughs> <laughs> well, probably, uh, well, we better. can have you back. Uh, you know, we can talk about, we talk about different, we talk about history. Well, we start out with an update on, on what's happened the last couple of weeks, two weeks. Um, and then we often develop into a specific topic, sometimes historical, sometimes, you know, just like last episode, we did Critter Country. We just covered Critter Country. What's their kind of the history of it, how we covered it. And so if we, you know, maybe one time, we're, maybe we'll do a parade episode uh, again and bring, you, and bring you back on to talk about that, you know. I'd so. love to talk, either that 96 summer 
With well, with the, the, the electrical parade appears to be, they've been teasing that it's going to come back somewhere. I don't know if it's going to be Disneyland or somewhere else, but if they bring the electrical parade back, then we should definitely have you want to talk about that. You know? Yeah, for sure. So. For sure. And we could talk, that's the summer of, uh, we mentioned, kind of alluded to it, Ken Kimberling and the Armory Party. <laughs> <laughs> that's, how I, that's how I became lead, you know. Congrats. Congrats. Thank you. I mean, I I remember that day fondly. I came into work. I did not call out to go to the party. Um, And it was a rough day. It was a really rough day. (laughs) But it made a point. I don't know what that point was, but (laughs) I. That's why. That's why I think Ken used to call me scab. (laughs) Oh, did he? Yeah. Somebody, somebody did. Somebody would call me scab because I became foreman because of that. That's great when they go, when, when you've applied to be foreman and they haven't made you foreman and then they come back later and they go, well, there's people out on bereavement and uh, other things going on. So do you want to be a a lead? So it's like, oh, so you're saying people have to die before you make me lead. (laughs) (laughs) Hey, but then you were, but then you were the regular lead in Adventureland. After after Uh, that. Yeah. I mean, I was basically, that was basically it became, lead shifts from there on out you know so yeah, yeah. so all right <laughs> sometimes you got to prove your worth i guess it happened to me it took me a while to get lead and i was told by mary that none of the managers want to make you lead but i'm gonna make you lead anyway so uh <laughs> this is on me too and i'm like that's kind of, can you just say not make it sound like i have to prove something <laughs> but i ended up being the regular lead of small world and um and uh, uh worked in the office with management like as soon as i became lead they all became my buddy and i was like we could have had this so much sooner <laughs> we could have had it yeah. so much sooner but uh, yeah it all worked out that so, yeah well yeah and i'm glad it did so <laughs> yeah thanks for coming on thank um, you i'm glad you and you and uh, lynn are out there talking the good word with Disneyland custodial uh been a huge part of my life and um and yours too and i love it i love the department even <sighs> even though i'm gone even though i hated it when i left it i still wish nothing for the best well i like to say story. once a janny always a janny i like to say yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. job take two weeks two weeks two weeks you sound like a parakeet there two weeks two weeks